What we got? Here we go. I'm going to go through this pretty quick. So, uh, I mean, you can always welcome to pause or uh, re-listen to anything if I say it too quickly. But uh, one thing I want you to recognize on this is there's two different ways we can write answers to probability, right? One is with a fraction like this. Uh, which is what I did mostly in the lesson, uh, but we could also write that as a percent. So if you actually did one divided by three, right, what would you get in a calculator? Right, you would get point three 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 three. 3. So if we bump that decimal over two places, right, then we would call it thirty three percent. So anytime you change from a decimal to a percent, that's always moving your decimal two places to the right. Um, anyway. Uh, so in this bag, we got four blue marbles, three red ones, and five green. So first things first, if you add those three numbers together, adds up to 12. So uh, these probabilities should all be out of a possible 12. Uh, so if we randomly pick a marble, what's the probability that we get a blue one? Well, four out of the 12 are blue. So that looks like this. If we reduce it, it looks like this. And if we change it to a percent, it would look like this. Uh, still out of 12 on the next one, but what's the probability that it's green? Uh, 5 out of the 12 are green, so it looks like this. If you type this into a calculator, it's going to say 0.42. So if you bump that two places to the right, we call it 42%. Um, the tree diagram, I went over in the notes, so um, you can definitely go off of what was in the notes to help guide you through what we did right here, but uh, this is the same thing as what we did in the notes, only this is now with blue and red instead of heads and tails uh, like it was with all coins uh, when we did it in the notes. So for this one, we have two events, which is what makes it a good candidate for the tree diagram. So these guys represent the first event and this level represents the second event. Um, and so in the first event, we're picking a marble. All right, and so we're going to lay out the possible outcomes um, of what we might get. So it's either going to be blue or red. So that's why I labeled these things as B and R. Um, with that, I put in the probabilities. I wanted you to see how this works um, so that you can use it to answer questions that you see down here. So you can see there are three marbles. Two of the three are red. One out of the three are blue. So there's a two out of three chance that I get the blue marble. There's a one out of three chance I get the red one. And this represents our first event, picking the marble. Our second event, we're flipping the coin, right? So just like in the notes, it's either heads or tails. And of course, it's 50-50 whenever you toss a coin. So those probabilities are all going to be one out of two. In order to get the results that you see on the right, uh, so here is our sample space, right? I could have gotten a blue marble and then heads on the coin, blue marbles, tails on the coin, a red marble with heads or a red marble with tails. So these are the four items that make up our sample space. So whenever it says list the sample space, that's this guy right here. Um, the probabilities that you see at the right come from multiplying from left to right. So what's the probability that I get a blue marble and then flip the coin and it lands on heads? So if I did two thirds times one half, I get two six. So this becomes the probability of this outcome. And I just did the same thing all the way down. So blue marble then tails, you would multiply two thirds times a half. And this is the probability of getting a blue marble with tails, right? And so same thing I did with the red marbles, right? Those are the outcomes. So what's the probability of getting a blue marble and a coin landing on tails? And that's where we're seeing that two out of six, which was this outcome right here. Probability of getting a white marble. Well, there is no white marble, so that's really simple. That would have to be zero. And then let me go down to the last one. Here's your lattice diagram. So if I roll two six-sided dice, so this is going to represent one of those, and then these represent the other one. So just like we did in the notes, there are 36 possible outcomes. I'm simply going to check the winners as I go. So which ones have a sum of five? So these X's right here are my sums of five. So I could get a four and a one. Those would add to five. I could get a three and a two. I could get a two and a three. Or I could get a one and a four. So these four X's represent the four cases where you're getting a sum of five. So four out of the total possible here would be my probability. And then getting doubles, and I did this one in the notes, uh, so doubles would be the 1-1, one, one, the 2-2, two, two, the 3-3. Three, three. So these red dots, there are six of them, represent the cases where you're getting doubles. So six out of the 36 
would be your doubles.